Miss D and D from this thing called Life. Life. We're back. Oh! <laughs> and we are stoked. Well, I know I am. Because, you know, Kiki has been doing radio for, you know, a couple Hi, weeks everyone. again now. I'm hearing feedback. I know it's my phone. Okay. Um, hold on. Well, and probably, uh, no, but we have to be able to hear Annette. Annette. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, I've got some feedback coming from some place. No, I don't. Okay. Um, but this is, it's so good to have you on. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you, ladies. How are you ladies doing tonight? I'm excited. I am really, like, for real excited. For I'm, real? I, for, for real. real. <laughs> I'm excited to have my sister back on the air with me. because She she was kind of hiding for a while. I, I didn't think she was going to come back. Uh-oh. Uh, she was hiding, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This thing called life. life was happening all the way around. Every time we would say, okay, we're coming back. Death would hit, sickness would hit, you know. So I'm just thankful that we are in a position now where we're not dealing with any of the above. Yes. So, and I'm stoked because I was looking through pictures. I think I told both of you already. But before we actually launched the show, we went to Chicago. We did. And was with Annette. We were with Annette on her show. Soul. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I think I reposted that a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and then here it is on our reboot. She's with us. So I'm just like, that is just the way it it's goes. Meant yeah. It's meant yeah. to be. It's meant to be. They paid me very well. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Barb. How are you, darling? Um, I want to start by introducing this gorgeous lady that is on the other side of the screen. For those of you that may not be aware of who she is, she is Annette Harris, host and executive producer of Mind, Body, and Soul with Annette. And she deals with all of those tough topics from a oftentimes biblical perspective, those things that, you know, people are afraid to tackle in the church, she hits them head on and without cutting any corners. And it's much appreciated, much needed. And I wish that she, that all of you would just at some point in time go to uh, find my body and soul with Annette that is uh, with the W, uh, slash A N E T and follow her page. Um, also, for those of you that are watching us for the first time on this thing called Life, we also have an IG page, we have a Twitter page, and as you see, we also have a, a, a Key and D um, fan page as it relates to just a Facebook page that is separate from our personal pages that we reserve for our families. <laughs> so, you know, that's what we'll be having a lot of our interactions, our, a lot of our conversations. So we ask that you would send us your friend request and, you know, chat up with us sometimes. But Annette, thank you again. And today's topic is victimizing the victim and it's a whole personal issue it is one of those things that absolutely positively grinds my gears and will you know i don't generally watch a lot of the news because for me no sooner than you hear what happens then you're hearing the negative about who it happened to. That is one of those things that absolutely, like when I said, grinds my gears, but it also tends to have an impact on me 
mentally and emotionally, which is, I think, what we, you know, what we're going to touch on today. Because I'm one of those people, I am an empath, and I am one of those people. I, I, like I said, I get to the, the point where really, if there's something going on in the world, like my mom will call and tell me, or D will be, hey, King, did you see this? And I'm not looking. I'm just not. Okay. So the angle that I am looking at hitting first is are we even aware of the fact that we're doing it most of the time? That we are being judgmental without even recognizing the fact that we are. Right. And the example I used um, when we put up the post was what if a police officer was shot? Is he a blue life or is he a black life? Especially in today's um, in today's environment, you know, with all of the racial tension, you know, when you hear of a police officer getting shot, the first thing you think about is was he black or white? Was he black or white? person or was he shot by a black person and the truth of the matter is should it matter well we know that if he was shot by you know if 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 it was if the person was shot by a black cop we know that that's getting ready to be a whole um that 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 particular you know officer and and unfortunately and it's horrible to think that way that we you know we feel that you know that black that black officer just lost their job you know, if not their lives, you know, they, they definitely just lost their jobs. However, you know, with when it comes to, you know, the the victim being a black person and the officers being involved being non-black, we're just like, oh, well, it's going to get swept up under the rug. But then again, that's also when we end up having the riots, when we end up having, you know, the marches and, and when there are people who are out there you know, and they're lighting candles and, and they're doing all of that. But then again, you know, that goes back to, is it for a case or is it for a cause? And that's, I want to ask our guest tonight. Is it for a case or for a cause? <laughs> well, you know, um, first, um, thank you ladies both for asking me to join you on this evening. Um, excited for you as you're getting back into the the radio industry. Um, what you started, um, continue on what you're doing. Um, but you know what? This this topic um, it, it's interesting, Key, that you mentioned um, the reason why this topic was important to you because you kind of said it was a little on a personal level type thing in the way, in the way you look at it. Um, there are a couple of couple of things I, I may want to touch on, but one thing you have to understand is that regardless of whether somebody's black or white, law enforcement or not, the bottom line, what people are looking at is the fact, whether we realize it or not, or whether we um, actually <laughs> believe this or not, we look at the world in a positive view. We have a positive, everybody has a positive viewpoint of the world, okay? Just in general. So for something to happen that's not positive, whether it is murder or rape or bullying or what have you, in an individual's mind, they're like, wait a minute, but this is a positive world. I have a positive view of the world. Why is this happening? And then also, why is it happening to somebody that's like me? Mm. So then you're trying to wrap your brain around that. And the only thing that your brain, and I always tell people, when the mind doesn't know the answer to something, it creates the answer. So what you're trying to do, you're trying to understand why this happened to, um, uh, we'll just throw out some examples, uh, Breonna Taylor. Why did this happen to Breonna Taylor? Breonna is probably, you know, many of, 
individual's age or maybe your niece or somebody's age or somebody that you can kind of relate to. You're like, why did that happen to her? So then you're trying to break it down in your mind, right? You're, you're trying to figure this thing out. And it, it really doesn't make sense to you because I'm looking at the world in a positive view, but that wasn't a positive act that just happened to Brianna, okay? So your mind is trying to find the answers. That's the bottom mm -hmm. line of what I'm trying to say. And then because it really can't put two and two together at that point, then comes the victim blaming because you're thinking that person had to have brought this on themselves. Because if I'm looking at this world in a positive view, there's no other way or other reason that this had that this could have happened, except maybe that individual brought it on themselves. So mm -hmm. that's what you're trying to pull in. My mind is very complex. It's very complex. So you're trying to you're trying to piece all of that together. You're trying to understand. Well, it had to have happened that way because we'll we'll we'll, we'll go. Let's pull an example of um, you know, unfortunately, when a young woman is raped. Okay, so then what what are some of the things that you hear? Oh, well, what? How are you dressed? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait. What did you do to egg him on? You know what I mean? So it you you are unfortunately you know the mind is trying to throw all that together. That's where that victim blaming comes in. Because we go back to what I said earlier. We look at the world in a positive viewpoint, and we don't think that those things will happen or should happen. Right. So that's one of the things I want to bring up. But hopefully that answered your question. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And while you were talking, the one thing that popped into my head was how desensitized we as a Black culture have become mm. to events like when we are gunned down by yeah. non-Black, especially by non-Black It's like the it's going to be okay. It's going to get go on the, um, what is it? Administrative leave, sometimes with pay, sometimes without. And then whatever charges that are brought, if charges are brought, if charges are brought, they are minuscule at best. And then here comes the big family payout. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, after that, it's like, mm -hmm. so have we really become desensitized like back to my example with the cop okay so cop is shot cop black okay another black man killed but i did notice that there is a different response when the cop is not in uniform and he's profiled yes people become enraged when that happens. Yes. Like I think was it a FBI agent? I think we had talked about that at one point in time. It's been a few months back now when he and some of his fellow friends and these cops walked up to him saying he fit the description. Yes. Of uh, look, speaking of fit the description, she's done a whole series on that. Um but it's it's like you get to a point where you just desensitize. So you just kind of get to the point of, okay, George Floyd. I hate to use him as an example, but people are trying to justify his murder by saying he did this or he did that. It doesn't really matter when you can subdue and arrest an active shooter that's white. You're and taking your Burger King on the way to jail. Uh -uh. One even better, that's more recent. We'll have him sitting on the outside of the car and when he says, I'm thirsty, give him water from a water bottle. Yeah. 
So it's like, you know, I don't know. Now, for me personally, it upsets me that that double standard is in place. But it's almost like there has been a slow indoctrination of sorts for things along that line. Yeah. I'm just going to read a couple of the comments. Um, we've had a lot of people who... <laughs> Um, oh, there we go. Unfortunately, in the modern world, I see too often people don't want to blame the person for the actual actions they did. Rather, blame a group, and instead of blame the victims, and instead of blame the victims because because it takes the focus off the prosecutors, the persecutors. Oh, excuse me. I can I can actually speak. Um, and then Deatra says hello, everyone, and Phil Smith also says hello, ladies. Um, I think I lost a friend. He was a, a, a state trooper over in Illinois. And he and some friends, they were at a cigar bar um, one evening with him and two of his friends. They were at a cigar bar one evening and someone walked in or as they were walking out, I'm not sure exactly how all that went. And they were gunned down. He was killed. Um, before it was recognized who he was the news report was like, oh, you know, some, some gun dealing. So they were gun and drug dealers before, you know, and that, that statement was never retracted. When they talked about the, the initial incident, that statement was never retracted. However, it later came out that the three men that were gunned down, one was a state trooper, one was some other kind of state official, and the other was a businessman from, I think he was from, might have been from here. It was either from here or from Milwaukee, somewhere in the surrounding area. So it wasn't even, you know, but before they, you know, identified who these gentlemen were by name in the media, they were gun and drug dealers. Now, what? keep in mind, I'm glad you brought that up. Keep in mind what, what I said. When the mind does not know the answer, to something, it creates the answer. Mm -hmm. So they knew nothing about the character of the your friend. They knew nothing about his profession. They knew nothing. He saw black. He was black, right? Yes, yes ma'am. They saw black, and so then they threw those labels on. They just All threw. Them. They created the answer. So that that's that's really what you're dealing with. You know what I mean? And no, it's not fair. And yes, it escalates, of course. It goes into the racism and, you know, just the labeling, grouping everybody all in together. You know, whether they're, you know, you're talking about all Blacks and you're talking about Hispanics or what have you. You know, we, of course, we can't do that, but that happens. And D, you mentioned earlier about desensitized. Unfortunately, we're experiencing this more and more like these, you know, the what we have experienced. I'm not claiming that we're going to continue because I'm, you know, praying, right. praying against right. that. But we've seen it so much that, you know, unfortunately, if you flip on your TV, you know, oh, God, another incident or another whatever. That's where that desensitization comes in. You know, so we really have to be careful when we are looking at the victim, victimizing the victim, your topic. We have to be very, very careful because, you know, I always, I always place myself into the situation of maybe the, you know, the individual. Um, if it uh, if it's somebody else who who lost a brother or something like that or lost. I kind of put myself in in that to kind of get a feel of how they're feeling. You know what I mean? That's just me. So I can get an understanding because I don't want my mind creating an answer that's not true. Right. Um, so that that that's just how I am. Um, many of you know, and I, I've said it even on my show. I talked on my show about how my family unfortunately, was victimized 
We were the victims, but we were victimized um, back in 1983. Unfortunately, when my brother was killed and you know, of course, you know, back then, you know, I don't know, they probably could have put labels on my brother. I don't remember everything. You know, they probably could have said he was a gangbanger or something like that, which we knew he wasn't. Matter of fact, my brother was one of the ones in the neighborhood who would go and witness two gang members about Jesus Christ. He didn't care. He wasn't scared or anything, right? But unfortunately, he was working his second job couple of guys came in and, and robbed the place and saw him trying to hit the buzzer for the police, which were right across the street. Mm. Tell about him, my brother's dead. Um, the young men who actually committed the crime, they were my age at that time. Young teenager, because I was about 15, was I even 16 yet? 14, 15 years old. So, you know, then we had to go through them catching the guys and then we had to go through a trial. My family became victimized during the trial because their family would threaten my family. Now, your loved one took away my loved one. My loved one is no longer here, not able to breathe, not able to live you know, on earth any longer. You're threatening my family, like you're mad at us. Who does that? Mm. And we literally had to be escorted in and out of the courtroom when the trial would happen. And we literally had to have security outside of our home because they were threatening to harm us, to kill us and all of that. Who does that? But your family was the one- That suffered the loss. That suffered the loss. The victims. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, you, you look at all of that and, and you know, maybe they, I don't know, they, maybe they were mad that their loved one actually did it and they're just taking out their frustrations on us. I don't know. I never understood that to this day. And it's been, what oh my god it's been years <laughs> um so i've never understood that but again you know we we have to be careful when we are um talking about a victim victim's family you know we, we can't just automatically just throw labels on and just tear them down and victimize them it, it makes no sense Put yourself in that situation and see if you would want to be victimized. Right. And that actually falls right in line with the next comment. We have all been conditioned to a pre-victimized state of mind growing up. How many times have our parents told us not to get caught being in the wrong place at the wrong time? Or, you know, for young ladies, our mother's talking about, you know, you're going to be out in the world, you know, what, what you got on? Why, why are you wearing that? You know, that's, that's the way to get yourself caught up. That's the you asking for trouble with that outfit on. And, <laughs> and you know what? You have to be careful with that because then those who are raped, they don't want to come forward. We know that. Yep. yep. They don't want to say anything because they don't think that anybody's going to take them seriously. Now they may, let me tell you this. They may have had on a short skirt. They may have gone to that club, but they didn't ask to be raped. No. Nope. And if they said no, no, don't do this. That's right. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Point you're going to go with your time. No, point blank period. Absolutely. Point blank period. There's no way to sugarcoat that. Um, uh, no matter what a supposed suspect has done in the past, he did his time for his past transgressions. He has every right to do process. I'm a veteran as an, and as a law officer, they are held to the same standards. They must follow the laws within the constitutions. These rights are for each and every citizen. 
Now I'm going to say, and this is where I take issue. Now I love Chris to death, and you know, and and Chris and I, we we have very spirited conversations. We are involved in a lot of um, projects and whatnot as far as inclusion and diversity and the whole nine. I am one of those who believe that when the Constitution was written, we weren't considered human. So when the Constitution was written, when those laws and stuff were written, they didn't apply to people that look like me because I wasn't a person. I was considered less than a human. So for those who look like me, those constitutional laws, those constitutional rights, none of that implied. We don't have the right, even though voting is a right, it's not a right for me because I'm black. We have the right to bear arms. It's not a right for me. When those rights were created, when those rights were written, it wasn't for me because they, I, I wasn't considered a human being. So those rights and those laws and those constitutional acts were not about people who look like me. Unfortunate, but true. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Oh, my my you know and 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 his um his statement made me think about a young man i think he was in texas or maybe georgia i can't think of where he was located but he's a young man who had served time and we all know that they have on the books that felons aren't supposed to deal with firearms and things of this nature yeah but a crime was being committed. Someone was breaking into their home. The gun did not belong to him, but he knew where it was in the home. And when an individual came in uninvited during the course of the midnight hours, he proceeded to handle things to protect his family, his children and his wife. But instead of the focus of everything being placed on the fact that the person that got shot was breaking in, the emphasis was put on the fact that he was a felon and he should have never had access to a firearm, which opens up a totally different discussion you know, okay, you have served your time, you have paid penance, and as a man, you got someone breaking into your home and you aren't allowed to protect your family because of a mistake from when you were younger regardless of if it was a year or 30 years, but you aren't allowed to protect your home, your children, your family. It, 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 you know, so it kind of, that kind of grinds my nerves a little bit when it comes down to, you know, when a person has served time but you're still being penalized after you have served the time given. Mm -hmm. And here it is, you're put in a position to protect your family and you end up going back to jail for protecting your family. Mm -hmm. He's awaiting trial right now but it's it's just one of those things where you and know that shouldn't even be the case, right? He his he family his debt to was the victim, right? He paid his debt to society, but yet and still that's still being held against him. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like a catch twenty two. Okay, your home, your home, Annette. Now you're you and you and your husband, you all aren't felons but your home is broken into hypothetically the first thing a lot of people are going to be like well did they leave a window unlocked 
was the was the door locked? Did they break? You know, even when the cops come to check the scene, was there forced entry? You know, so it's like it's not putting a burden of proof of okay, you need to go find the person that did wrong by me. Now, can I add this though? Throw this in. Yeah. I'm not sure those who are in law enforcement probably can maybe say this better than what I'm going to say now. But I would think that those are probably like standard questions. They have to check all of that stuff out. You know what I mean? Because again, they're still mm -hmm. trying to find the answer. You know what I mean? So they have mm -hmm. to ask all of that. I remember my vehicle was sitting in front of my house. And overnight, mm -hmm. obviously, somebody went into it. And I normally lock my vehicle, but that's the first question they asked me. Was your vehicle locked? Did you leave it unlocked? And I'm like, no. So, but then, then, but then you start thinking to yourself, wait a minute, maybe I did leave it unlocked. You know what I mean? But I think those are typical questions, you know, that they have to kind of weed out. I think I watched too many cop shows, but I, I think that that's what they, they have to do. <laughs> You can never watch too many cop shows. Listen, I'm telling you, don't take me off. I, you will disappear and I'll make it look like Winnie the Pooh did it. Don't don't mess with me right about now. Yeah, this um, is a how to get away yeah, with this murder. Is, yeah, this is a murder. Uh, uh, NCIS, uh, law and order, CSI yeah, kind yeah, of no. household. Don't come here. You, you don't come in here. You will disappear Chicago now. Chicago PD. Yeah, they will never look at anybody in this house. Um. But then again, I still have an issue. One of the things, you know, and, and they, they and and I'm going to, I know there's a couple of people on, on the stream who, you know, may get a little touchy about this one. Breonna Taylor, <laughs> including my sister. This woman was laying in her house, in her bed, asleep. Got, the house was, they came into the police. Let me not say them and they, the police came into her house while she was asleep and they murdered her in her bed while she was asleep. They could not say she was resisting arrest, which is something that at the very, very, the, the very first thing that was said was that she was trying to resist arrest. No, the sister was in the bed asleep in her own house that you had to force your way into that nobody called you to come over to. You had to force your way into this house, into this woman's bedroom who she was asleep she was you killed her while she was asleep you know they tried to like run a background check on this woman luckily she was clean so now you can't even use that but they don't want to release the names of the officers that were involved in that yeah are you serious right now she was at home in her bed in her home asleep mm -hmm. so there was no resisting arrest she didn't attack the police no she didn't even know they were there but I think with that, that's where the boyfriend comes in because he did have a firearm because he thought that, you know, some somebody was breaking in the house. house and they initially charged him until a big stink was put in place and people raised 50 pounds of heck to get him. And they realized, OK, well, no, we went in on a no knock warrant and this man was doing what he was supposed to do. Yeah. You know, and they did charge him, I think, with resisting and something else, but all the charges against him had to be were dropped. dropped. Yeah. Had yeah. to be dropped. But uh, but yeah, but see, that takes me to a situation with, and I know most of the people online. Well, let's hit this comment from Buddy and then okay. we'll we'll hit the next one. Victimizing the victim happens when the perpetrator is seeking to avoid punishment or his or her supporters are assisting them in that effort. George Floyd, George Floyd, I have to come. Who, who, never mind. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going, I'm going to step away from that. Drayshawn Jones, which is a, a situation that was here at home, here in Indy. Still going on. Still going on. That young man, now mind you, he was 
an elected officer who was home, who I think he ran a stop, a red light or something. I'm not even sure what it was. But instead of stopping, he kept going. Then again, he realized that he was being pursued by several white police officers. Now we're in a very, very racist city. I'm like, y'all, y'all can say whatever y'all want to about Indianapolis. Indianapolis is one of the most racist cities that I have ever lived in. And I've lived all up and through down in the South. Race Indianapolis is one of the most racist cities I've ever lived in. Pointing that out. He was realized he was being followed by several white police officers. So he jumped out of his car. Mind you, the whole time he's got Facebook Live going. They said, now mind you, he's also having to hold his pants up while he's running. So he's got his phone in one hand, he's got his pants in the other hand, but they said he turned around and fired at the police officers who then unloaded, they shot this man, I think upwards of 36 times. He was shot so badly and his face, his mom was a nurse, his face was so disfigured from bullets that when the mom had to go to identify the body, they wouldn't let her see his body at first. And then they wouldn't release the names of the officers at first. But, and then they tried to say, one of the very, very first things that they tried to say was, he turned around and he fired back at the police officers. That's funny, his gun was found in the car. The gun is found he turned around and he fired at the police officers. No gun was ever retrieved. No gun was ever found with the body. Very first thing they said, oh, he fired at the police officers. That's why they opened fire on him. And then a black officer, now this came out later, a black officer, when all of this happened because they didn't realize that the phone was still recording, looked down at him and said, oh, well, that's a closed casket. Guess who's been fired and guess who's still employed? The black officer was fired. The white officers, the ones that were named because there were, remember I said that there were several in pursuit. So there were several there. Like the bullets that were in the young man's body came from more than just the two guns of the officers that were named. The black officer was terminated. The white officer, I think, is still pending administrative review. The other officer's name was never still released. Wow. And the only reason the mother finally got the um, coroner's report is because was because she, she no because she had the the courts had the um, special prosecutor requested oh yeah that they not be released to the family or the attorney. And they raised 90 pounds of head. So that was the way that they managed to eventually after, I think it was after about three weeks after it was given, yeah. they finally got the coroner's report. But they are, but under the stipulation that they can leak absolutely no information that's on that report. Wow. But even with Dre John being stupid and young, you know, was he I, like twenty years old? Twenty, somewhere like twenty. He was he was under like about twenty two years old. But even with that, now people were taking the Facebook Live video from when he was being stupid and irresponsible. Mm -hmm and a complete butt crack and going through neighborhood shooting the gun that he had. Mm -hmm. And they are, you know, and I, and I get the frustration of him, them seeing that because I was like, are you for real? You could have shot up in somebody's house and killed somebody. Are you serious? But then that this particular incident when he was killed, you know, I'm still waiting on because see, you know, they just put out a request the uh, the uh, Indiana State Police or Indianapolis Police Department. I don't know which one. Just put out a request asking 
they're looking for two specific vehicles, one in particular that went through right when everything happened. Probably the mother and daughter where the daughter got out and filmed everything, but they yeah. don't know who that is. Right. And uh, so they're looking for this particular vehicle, the people that were in it, so that they could talk to them. Whatever. Give us your phone and audio footage. Nope. And that's, you know, so that's kind of one of those deals where... Listen, that one. This say something. Now she laughing at me. <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Annette. I'm sorry. No, I was going to ask a question because I was trying to get clarity on what you guys were saying. So okay. there was footage of him before the incident that he was killed of him shooting through the neighborhood or something? No, no, no. When the car chase happened, he hit Facebook Live. When he got ready to jump out the car, he turned on Facebook Live. So he was recording everything. What happened was during the chase, when they all got out and they were on foot, a car was going through when all of it happened. There was a mother and daughter. There, was, there were several people that went through, but there was specifically a mother and daughter whose name would not be released and they wouldn't give their names. But they got out. The daughter got out and filmed what happened. So the police or the state police or the city police, I'm not sure who it is, are looking for the cars that went through at the time of the chase and the shooting so they can talk to the people who, who did the filming, the people who drove through at that particular time. No, I think what you referring to when I was talking about him going through the neighborhood. Yeah. He was running yeah. through the neighborhood. No, that was, uh, that was a few days prior. Where he okay. was, where he was shooting his gun, just driving down through a neighborhood and was just shooting. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I remember that. Okay, so <clears throat> I was trying to piece everything together. That's why I was asking the question. I had heard about the incident, but that's the first time I heard about days before, days prior, whenever it was, him going through the neighborhood shooting. So I want to ask you a question now. I do not agree with victimizing the victim. I do not. What would you say, even in an instance like that, the one you just brought up about him? Now, you know, unfortunately, you're not, a lot of times labels, we already talked about labels, just being placed, you know, regardless of what your uh, race is or what have you. Um, if, <laughs> take that young man for instance, would you still consider them victimizing him because I'm, mean, you know, relating what he had done a few days prior? Are you still considering that he was victimized? Once for he was me, murdered? Mm -hmm. For me, you can go and get active shooters, white shooters. You can go and get active shooters who have just desecrated uh, Police, uh, you know, theaters, or just walked into a mall or a crowded area, and you just done killed all these. You know, broke you walk up into a school, you just done shot up all these folks, and they can apprehend that same person who is armed. Who is armed? He was not armed when he was shot down. You can apprehend this this same person who is armed, who we know has killed people. OK, you can apprehend them and you can take them into custody. You can sit them on the sidewalk and give them water from a bottle in your car or you can take them to Burger King. Either way it goes, they are alive. They are in custody. And being shown preferential treatment. Mm -hmm. So if 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 that, if you can apprehend someone who has we knowingly just killed all these people and who is armed at the time that you approach them, yet you have to chase this person who is unarmed and that person is now killed and murdered and dead and they didn't kill anybody previously. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that's still a victim. Okay. Victimizing the victim. All right. I mean, that, I mean, I just wanted to know what, and anybody else on live, you want to answer that too. I just wanted to know because then it gets into um, kind of what you talked about earlier, D, you know, just, 
you know, you just automatically just because they were this or because they've done this before mm -hmm. in his situation a few days prior, you know, so who knows? Maybe maybe they had been looking for him. I don't know. But then I get what you're saying, Key, and I, I do agree, you know, that um, the way it's handled, the way you apprehend someone, I mean, it's, yeah, what we've seen them do before with the guy was Dylan, right? Is that the Burger King guy? They took him to Burger King. Was that Dylan? What's his name? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's sad. Um, and then you have to look at, I mean, there's so much that goes into this, you know, how do you, in, as the police, uh, law enforcement, how do you even handle, um, you know, these situations? Because, it, I mean, it, it's ridiculous the way you apprehend. They, they have to do a better job. They have to do a better job. And uh, Barbara says that they are two separate incidents. So, yes, in, uh oh, where'd he go? Okay, it's two separate incidents. So, yes, in the shoot down incident, he was victimized. Considering the previous incident, uh, no, you, considering the pre previous incident that happened days earlier would be victimizing the victim because this is a, it, those may have been why they may have been looking for him. But in this particular situation, in this particular instance, one, again, no one had been killed at that point. He was unarmed and they, they mowed him down. So yeah. she says it's very complicated for sure, but you know, the facts are the facts. And I agree with that. And, and, and so for me, that is just another, you know, another case of, you know, and, we're and, victimizing him. And where they're saying that, hey, that, that his... Um, hey, Cass. As we're in our papa. Hey, Cass. Sorry. They were saying that in his... Um, that his gun had been shot twice. And it was beside him. Now, for... Now, I actually saw the video that the young lady recorded. Because they started out with her and her mom in the vehicle. Yeah. And after you hear this succession of, you know, all these different shots, and then all of a sudden there's a moment of silence, and then you hear, pop, pop. So here it is, somebody whose whole face is gone. Yeah. It's supposed to have turned around and shot. Turned around and shot at because the, even the young lady was like, oh my God, they tased him. And then, Next thing you know, he was down. So it was just so it's a very it's it's one of those things where they're gonna have to go timeline, just that timeline is gonna have to be so that's why they're looking for her. But you know, going back to the original topic at hand, he was stupid with he, the things he did, he, he was, was not wise no. with running from the cops, he was not wise doing that at all because he was actually being chased by a couple of other officers who fell off of the chase. They, they stopped chasing him. Mm. And then another vehicle that saw him further down picked up the chase again because these other officers were like, okay, we're heading into a you know, more populated yeah. area. So they fell back off of the chase. And so this other vehicle initiated a chase, you know, further down the stretch. And that was when everything else uh, happened because and it, what was so sad was he kind of, I guess, knew because even on the live, he was apologizing to his mom. Yeah. Wow. And that's, that's the thing about it. You know, even when our, you know, when we, when we make stupid mistakes, you know, and we, we do foolish things because, you know, just as human beings, we do foolish things. But to know that because the police are in pursuit of me and because my skin is what it is, I know I am not going to survive this incident. Mm -hmm. That's the climate of our country. That is where we are where we stand today 
where yeah. we know that no matter what it is, as African Americans, as Africans in America, whatever you want to call it, because of the tone of our skin, if the police become involved, we know that there's a very good chance we're not going to make it out of. I know that I got pulled over for a traffic stop and I had my daughter in the car. I think she was 13 or 14 years old. I got pulled over me. Like I can be an angry black woman, whatever, but I'm only about this big. So it's whatever. But so they pulled me over. I was driving a black Impala. Okay. So again, very, I mean, it's a very common car. I had on shades. I had on a black hoodie. But when they pulled me over, I I had on shades because I was developing a migraine. They pulled me over. It was two white officers in one car. They pulled me over, approached the car with the gun drawn and told me to step out of the car. The other officer went around, had my daughter to roll down her window and held a gun not a foot from her face my child sat there and wailed and cried and she was like please don't kill me i just want to grow up to be an engineer i am an honor student i am 14 years old please don't kill me and that is what she kept repeating over and over again absolutely now this is the most stoic little just she's that's that's my princess she is a warrior but i mean she sat there and she was bawling and she was crying they had me on the front end of my impala at that time and it wasn't until a black female officer pulled up because she saw the situation a black female officer pulled up and said what's going on Mm -hmm. and i think i forgot to stop for a stop sign or i look suspicious in a black hoodie and a black impala because i'm always you know especially with her in the car i'm very conscious of of street signs and things of that nature but i was a black woman i had on shades i had on a black hoodie you know she had on a big sweatshirt because that's what she wore at the time all the time so she's got on a hoodie Again, black impala, you know, it's starting to the sun's starting to set. So why do I have on shades? And they pulled us over. You fit the description. I fit the description. Yeah. You know, um, you both just described too, because I had maybe like, I don't know, maybe like six things, myths, if you will, about victims. The first one when you talked about the young man in Indy that lost his life they were victimizing him and basically saying that he deserved it. Yeah. Your situation, the cops are probably saying that you key should change, change your, what you had on change. You know what I'm saying? Because they automatically thought she ran this stop sign or stoplight or whatever. And then I look, oh, it's, it's something. So in other words, they're, they were thinking that you should change your behavior or how you dress. You know, the, the officer even told me that the car that I drive, the car that I drive was a very popular car with drug dealers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. So they thought you should change your vehicle too. You know, um, and unfortunately, sometimes, <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes they they may say that. And in some situations that we've seen, it doesn't even matter. They'll still do what they're going to do. Um, but yeah, an another thing I'm just going to read a couple. I know you guys are wrapping up, but. Another thing, uh, another myth about victims, they say that they caused it or brought it on themselves. Um, we talked about that kind of when we talked about the rape um, situation. Or they may say that the victim should have known better. And that can even maybe go back relating to that young man, Andy. He should have known better running through the neighborhood, you know? 
So then consequently, they'll still victimize him. Um, they also say that the person didn't fight back. They're too sensitive. You know, so all of these things, those are myths. I, I was bringing up myths about how you're victimizing the victim. You know, because regardless, and I know a lot of us looked at the George Floyd in, in, instance incident as you know, it was disgusting to me after he was murdered that they're saying, trying to pull out all this stuff. Oh, well, he was trying to sell cigarettes or he was trying to do this or what, you know, or fake $20 bill or whatever it was. I'm like, really? So his life did not mean more than the quote unquote fake $20 bill. Um, so and yeah, we did not have known what's fake if it was fake at all. Right. And I never really heard anything coming back from that store owner, you know, and I don't know if anybody, maybe I missed it, you know, but I'm sure he probably regrets to this day, <laughs> you know. Um, well, he actually said that because while when they started to subdue him, here's the part about that that really hurt me to my heart they had actually called for medical assistance because he was having breathing issues. Yeah. So, you know, if you know that you've already called for assistance and then you're dealing with all of the other dynamics that happen after that, it just kind of compounded, I think, the outrage that so many individuals have felt concerning not just that situation, but it was like, okay, well, here we are going through the song, old school song. Here we go, going through the same thing. You know, it's just one of those deals where it's like you just, and, and, and for once, they're really wasn't a for real for real leg for anybody to stand on. Mm -mm. Just about eight minutes, 46 seconds. Yeah. And and then see, and Barbara says, yes, based on what you were just saying and that beliefs that people have that are not true. Now the sad yeah. part is, and we are going to wrap up, um, is a lot of the myths are based on our indoctrin, indoctrin, subtle indoctrination. All black men are to be feared. Mm -hmm. All black women are angry. You know, white is right. You know, all of these myths. You know, yeah. like, and 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 I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna wrap up with you. Um, talking about the young boy, the five-year-old killed by the neighbor. He was killed by a bullet intended for the child's father. Mm. And it has come out that the father had invited the neighbor over. They had done drugs together because the father was still high when the cops got there and all kinds of other stuff. And and the stories that the parents told does not line up with the evidence, but what the suspect actually told them is what actually lined up with the evidence. He was like, no, I did not go out. Oh, you know, the child was not in my yard. I went out to shoot the daddy who ended up becoming, you know, but the child ended up, you know, being the casualty in that situation, which goes back to a momentary stupid decision, even on the part of the young man that that was the neighbor that shot. But I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to let you close us out. Even when we make our stupid decisions, it is unfair when we are placed in a position where we are the victim to allow our previous stupid decisions to determine how you view 
my victimization. Mm. It's yeah. a, and I'm saying you, but not you as an individual, but it's like, we are just programmed. Okay, well, this person is black, so they have to be guilty. This person is a meth head, so they've got to be guilty. This person is a drug dealer or a former drug dealer, so they've got to be guilty. So, you know, I appreciate you coming to to just kind of peak the, just kind of tip the iceberg with the conversation because it's something we oftentimes don't think about. We do it instinctively. Yeah. We yeah. all do it in some shape, form, or fashion. Whether, you know, and I, like I said, I appreciate you coming and taking time out of your schedule because this is a busy woman, ladies and gentlemen. She has her show tomorrow at noon, uh, Central Standard Time on, and you can find her right there on her, look that up, Annette known as Annette. You will find she will be live tomorrow at noon, Central Standard Time, 1 p.m. Eastern. And then she also has a show, uh, My Body and Soul, um, a con an a and &E conversation, which airs on Thursdays at 6 p.m. And you can also find that, you know, she often times shares that on her page as well. So when I say we appreciate you taking the time out to sure. just dialogue with us, we appreciate you. We love you. We thank you for all of your love and your support. And I'm going to let you have the final word. Well, dear, again, thank you both for asking me to be on. This is definitely a topic that one hour would just not do it any justice. You just tipping, you're not even touching in the surface. You just mm -hmm. kind of gliding over a little bit. <laughs> Victimizing, mm -hmm. this was a, 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 a wonderful topic. So I don't know if you both chose it together, but it, it's a great topic and something definitely that needs to be looked at, discussed, analyzed so that we can understand what's going on. Um, and I, I think you guys coming back, you know, uh, kicking, re-kicking uh, TTCL off. Uh, this, this was a great topic to do just that. So um, hopefully there was something that was said tonight that, that could help um, you know, all of us in, in our thinking and our understanding of why people really victimize the victim. And like Dee just said, we all do it in some shape, weight, form, or fashion. We just have to be really, really careful. We got to be careful because we can always point out what they're doing. And I'm black. I'm not sure who else is on here black. We can always point out what they're doing to us. But what are we doing? to the other races as well. Um, so it, it's definitely something that, it, I mean, it's worldwide, <laughs> you know, so we have to be careful in how we are looking at victims, their families or what have you. And let's, let's just not jump to conclusions. Get right. the facts. Don't have your mind creating an answer when you don't really know what it is, so. That's all I want to say. Thanks for the shout out for my shows. Again, thank you for inviting me on. I appreciate And I appreciate you, girl. You know I do. <laughs> likewise, <laughs> likewise. Well, thank you all for your comments and thank you all for, you know, taking the time out of your schedules to join us. We are definitely going to be in the six o'clock spot unless, um, you know, some employment types of changes happen and hours, you know, but aside from that, six o'clock on Tuesdays will be when you can catch p and on this thing called life. Thank you for joining us and we appreciate you. Take care.